by youtubers high and back with a 41 years of mills and boone and it is a man's in the crown kate and lucas essentially it's mills and boone spotlight and this is the title but it's the title of the book okay it's under the king's command by ingrid weaver dark secrets royalty and riches okay and the thing is these two books are interconnected but they're by two different authors okay so it's like the princes of montebello series if you will and uh, which is like a principality in europe okay so I need to the first one, Under the King's Command by Ingrid Weaver. Sam Coburn agreed to track down the kidnapper of Montebello's Crown Prince's baby son. But when he met his co-commander, duty became both pleasure and pain. He sent a Kate Mavana's cool greeting couldn't erase memories of the heated affair that had once consumed them, or the puzzling way she'd left. And the die-hard Navy still had two mysteries to solve. Right, so it starts off, I love this, how this starts off. It starts off with Kate... Okay, this you've been given the baby. Okay, get this. When Kate first heard the baby cry, she wanted to keep running. It was probably just a seagull in the harbour, nothing out of the ordinary. We already had passed the halfway point I was heading back. She needed a shower, she needed sleep. Okay. So his favourite early in the morning, a sunny this woman appears to give the baby to Kate because she's wearing like the uniform of the military where she works for. And it turns out that this baby, okay, is given over because it is the crown prince's baby there you go <clears throat> right it took no no more than a heartbeat for kate to assess her options as u.s naval officer and a foreigner in montebello she had no thought of the civilian they turned away to continue with her run without the question no matter how tired she was no matter the flax she might take from her base command for interfering the decree duty had to send her the rule book and need for sleep but well, I could take another step, Kate grabbed her wrist, so I can't let you go. Okay. So, Kate basically stopped this woman, who was on her way to give this baby to the royal family. And her attitude is um, that she's going to give this baby a reward. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not even my baby. I've been taking care of him since his mother died. I was bringing him to his father, I swear, but I couldn't get into the palace. And, lady, I don't know what you're talking about, the guard said. Did you say palace, someone asked. I shouldn't be treated like this, Dawn persisted. I should be getting a reward. That's no ordinary baby. He's the son of Lucas Sebastini. Prince Lucas Sebastini. The baby is the royal heir. Okay. So, it transpires, okay, that Gretchen... Um, and Ursula, who were sisters of this individual who, um, of Jessica, who gave birth to this baby overseas in America and then died. And then they were bringing it to the Royal Palace to get a reward and to explain there's more details. And basically, Ursula turned out to become, turned out Ursula was a murderess. Um, she killed many people on this trail to kind of get all this money. It's very kind of convoluted. And now, Prince Sebastini, which in an earlier book, and I can't find the book it's based on, so I'm going to help me out with this, was, had amnesia in America, met Jessica Chambers, slept together, she had his baby, he got his memory back, he left, and then she had his kid. Okay, because she's very pregnant, I shouldn't tell her. Okay, alright. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Ursula, because Ursula is the criminal in all this. Uh, she's the one who should be stuck in some dungeon, not me. She's the one who to bring, who told me to bring the baby here. She was the one who made sure we had the birth certificate to prove who the kid is. We're supposed to be given a reward from the world. They're supposed to be grateful like we've been taking care of their royal heir. We've been set for life. She had ideas, but she screwed it up. Okay? Because she's wanted for murder. Right. Yes. Yes. So... So now, okay, try and track down, okay, the kidnappers, Ursula, who obviously who, who's a murderess, and so they hire Sam and Kate to do so. Okay, right, <clears throat> All right. And Sam and Kate have this, I guess, we kind of like secret history. Okay, All right. Seeing Sam and the baby, because um, obviously um, Sam holds a baby. Sam put his paper memories was bad enough, but she handled it, hadn't she? I was going to cope with him, seeing him every day, walking with him, beneath his scent, hearing his voice, seeing his smile. Because in this kind of, we're going to find a okay, this murderer, okay, who actually kidnapped the baby from his dying mother to bring it here. 
we've got to have this kind of the hell of a relationship in the past. Yes, they had a hell of a relationship in the past. It was steamy, it was filthy, and mm -hmm. and with Zinsuke is that the thing is, Usha is absolutely beautiful, and she relies on her looks to kind of get what she wants in life. And even this, okay, she's got such an element, okay, of Ursula or her own self-importance, okay, right? Ursula hated the water. She never learned to swim. The only reason she owned a bikini was that she looked so scrumptious in one. Scrumptious? Mm-hmm. She lifted her arm to hold her hat against the breeze and how deep it. I just love sailing. It's so exciting, don't you think? And then, okay, she meets this teenager and manipulates him to get away on the boat, okay? Right. And the fact is, okay, that this author's got this kind of, like, really kind of dim view Okay, in good news about men and comes to sex. It's okay, a seventeen year old boy okay gets a head turned again okay, by a woman to go on a boat trip where he knocks her out him out again okay, basically like you know, steals the boat. And yeah. And this bit here, okay. All right. All right. All right. I don't blame her. This is about the boy's mother. The kid was last seen playing touchy feely with a woman in a bikini. Given the law of sex, a kid at age would be willing to do this about anything. What is? There was, there was a silence. Sam could have kicked himself for bringing up the topic. What he said was true, though. Men of all ages tended to put the common sense on hold when it came to sex. He was no different. It didn't matter how many times he reminded himself of Kate's disinterest, he still he still responded to her. Because during all this, Kate and um, S S S and Sam are getting closer and closer. And the thing is, okay, it talks about the dynamic, okay, between, and this is actually a topic that comes up a lot in Mills and Boone, regarding pregnancy and, like, and the genders. Here you go. Mm -hmm. I just bit here. I wonder why Jessica didn't contact him when she discovered she was pregnant in the first place, Sam said. She should have. He had a right to know. I disagree. He left her to deal with the situation on her own. Why should she tell him? Still had a right to know he was going to become a father if he'd known. What, he would have gone back to her father sooner? He would have ignored his duties because of the baby, okay? Well, yes. Kate stretched to look at Sam in the eye, her words a harsh whisper. No relationship should have been based on only a child. Jessica must have realised she had better off without a man who didn't love her. She could raise a child alone and give him enough love for two parents instead of making everyone miserable by forcing an instant family on a man who hadn't planned to settle down. There's more to this, okay? Because what happened, I'm going to talk about this, okay? Because it's going to relate to the next part. Is... The prince, Prince Lucas, got, um, basically was working like undercover, okay, and then it was in a plane crash, he lost his memory, and then he met Jessica, and then they had a kid. So this whole kind of, he would have done something, well, no, that's a bit ridiculous. And also, in that kind of situation, and I'm trying to write down the first book, right, well, in that dynamic, Jessica held all the power anyway, so the whole kind of, you know, poor Jessica, well, well not, well, not really. Okay, so but in this, okay, trying to find Ursha and the baby, okay, also to find Ursha and because she's a murderess and all that. Her, Kate and Sam tried to get back close together, okay. Um, right, um, and they seriously just seem to find any, any excuse to have sex, right. And the fact is, okay, then it transpires, okay, what happened during their affair. There was no affair, there was no fair party, but there was no affairs, affairs in the middle of the novels. Is that Kate and Sam had a brief relationship and Kate fell pregnant. And she didn't tell Lucas she was pregnant. Of course not. Okay? And her son died. It was too early. She was carrying was six months and they couldn't save the baby. Okay? Right. And Sam, I'll give some respect for Mills and Boone novel. Sam calls her out on everything, okay? Right. Because they parted on normal terms, okay? Here you go. Right. Kate, when we agreed to say goodbye, we had known there was a baby. That would have changed everything. There was no need for you to know about a miscarriage, she said finally. I handled it myself. No one should have to go through that on your own. I should have been there to share, share of your pain. I managed to get over it. I got on with my life. Her worst were clipped and mega fat, but her cheeks still gleam with tears. No, you didn't, he said. It still hurts, doesn't it? Right. I managed, she repeated. I was doing fine until a week and a half ago. Finding the prince's baby and seeing you again. But the memories of it, that's all. 
No, you won't do in a flying cage. You don't smile, you don't play. You're still keeping that pain inside. Right. And her excuse is, her excuse is what it would jeopardise your career and our career and my career. And this bit here, this bit here, mm -hmm. is when Sam calls Kate on her plan anyway. Okay, right. It's what would have been the best for everyone. I still had to give up my career in the Navy if I had to, so I could buy my child a stable home. Right. He looks at the way he lifts her to their chin. Damn, he was starting to hate the gesture. He could see her pain, but she didn't want his comfort. She didn't want anything from him. While he carried her in his heart for five years, she'd always judged and condemned him. Kate, his Kate. Only it wasn't his Kate any longer, was she? May she never been. The Kate he'd known would never betray him like this. Yes, betrayed. That's how he felt. Conceiving a child was the most intimate of acts, but she had dismissed him to his pain in it, to his part in it. You would have raised our son by yourself, he said. You would have kept me from my child. But I'm ready to settle down, you still aren't. That's not fair. You judged me of giving me a chance. I wasn't willing to gamble with my baby's future. He was my baby too. You had no right. And that's the thing. Sam, okay, calls her out on it. He calls her out, okay, the fact that she didn't tell him. The fact is, okay, that she has spent five years being like a martyr to the fact that she was a mother for a brief moment. And in the end, okay, mm -hmm, right, Sam throws this at her, right, mm -hmm. right, but you still feel guilty, yes. Is that what you feel guilty about, Kate, or do you have nightmares because you're terrified that somewhere deep down that you will believe you lost a baby? Yeah, and it turns out deep down, yeah, she was. She was. <laughs> right. Mm hmm Right. We go. This is when um, Kate's thinking it over. Relieved you lost a baby, the thought that it wouldn't go away, it taunted her just out of reach at one burst of the light on the end of her vision. Right. And yeah, yeah. Sam, but since she walked out of the hospital, she'd only been half alive. Sam was right. She didn't smile, she didn't play, she obeyed her passion, and that wasn't the woman she'd been before. She'd been punishing herself. But would that be enough? And yeah, it turns out that, yeah, in a way she was relieved. She absolutely was relieved about this. So, but the fact is, okay, all these are five years, you feel like a martyr to it. So I like the fact, okay, that Sam is calls, basically calls her out on the kind of, you shut me out of your life. You are like a martyr. You're not over it. And deep down you were relieved, which is cruel. But at the same time, I can't appreciate this cruelness because this is a moment where... Kate is actually quite a cruel person to Sam. She seems to like subconsciously blame him for the death of her child, for, the, for not being there, even though she never told him. Okay? So, I like the fact, okay, that it's awful called her, well, um, Ingrid Weaver has a character who's been called out on their typical Mills and Bruno fuel behaviour. But the thing is, okay, they track down Ursula, and this, this is when, this is when, Ursula Chambers, okay? Right. Mm hmm. And this bit here, okay, men are these guys are getting military. It would be so much simpler if he could knock Chambers out, Sam thought, but he never yet struck a woman. She's a murderess, okay, all bets are off. He should have had to get some of the tire up, he glanced around. And then, um, in the next instant, the boat surged forwards. Sam struggled to regain his balance, whipping his gaze to Chambers. She was on her feet, one hand on the frontal level. She never home to spear gun, was to get Sam in the chest, because at the end of the day, She should have she should have punched her out, but he didn't. And she was like, oh my god, I can't hit a woman. Who cares? Oh my god, okay, she was a murderess. She was a murderess. She murdered Jessica. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Okay. Right. And this bit here, this bit here, okay, is when um it is from Ursula's point of view, okay. Um, when she's after she's finally um imprisoned. It'd be so easy if Jessica had left her beloved ranch and tried to Tell to Montebello the way I showed Ursula to when she realised a grifter was actually a prince. She would have been set for life after the king had learned Jessica was carrying the royal heir. But no, her so far sister refused to use a child to tie her to a man who had never made promises or spoken of love. Yeah. Well. And then, and then it turns out, no, 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 Jessica wasn't murdered. Jessica wasn't murdered. Okay. So Jessica's alive. Jess is alive. Lucas pressed the heel of his hands to his temples and spun around. Oh, of course, Jess is alive. 
and then he runs off to America to find get his lady, okay, why Sam and Kate basically get back together and try to put a new relationship, okay. So final thoughts, well, obviously, okay, it's now a second part, because now it's going to be um, Jessica and Lucas, Prince Lucas, but from a militaristic point of view, I actually quite likes it, but the thing is, once... Kate meets Sam again. It can't, she kind of like becomes a bit too soft hearted. You know, try to see like, you know, lovey dovey. You can see the person she used to be, okay, before she became more kind of like tough and cynical. Now, actually, I did kind of enjoy it, okay, because normally this is a book from the military perspective with this kind of like love story, okay, of the, of the prince and his, well, at the time it assumed ex, dead ex, in the background. But I generally liked the kind of like dynamic going on. And I actually did like um, uh, Sam and Kate's characters because the thing is, Sam is not afraid, even though the fact is he just found out that he's lost a child, not to call Kate out on hypocrisy. And I generally like that. I generally, generally like that. So, Kate and Lucas, okay. And uh, now to Kate, we covered Kate, and also the crown. Now we're going to get to Lucas by Justin Davis. Next up. 41 years in the world of this, I love you one. Mm -hmm. Bye now.